Bloombox Growing Deeper is sponsored by Great Plains Nursery in Weston, a family-owned business that focuses on providing native trees and shrubs for our communities, habitat, and conservation. When we need to order trees that we don't grow for community projects in eastern Nebraska, we order from Great Plains Nursery because of their high-quality stock and excellent Great Plains native selection. To learn more about Great Plains Nursery, their services, and to browse their current stock, visit greatplainsnursery.com or visit the nursery Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Thank you to Great Plains Nursery for sponsoring Nebraska Statewide Arboretum programs. Welcome to Bloombox Growing Deeper. I'm Sarah. I'm Hannah. And we're on a mission to help you become the gardener you want to be. April Fools! We're a couple days late. Um, (laughs) Some people spend the whole month celebrating April Fools. I mostly forget about it completely because we're like really busy right now. And then I get tricked. I get tricked into things. We both get tricked very easily. I'm so gullible. I can't handle it. Please don't trick me. Like, I hate April Fool's Day. (laughs) I hate being tricked. I just take people at their word. And so then when they tell me something, I'm just like, okay. Yeah. Before me and you, there was a long and glorious history of pranks in the Nebraska Statewide Arboretum among staff. But um, But I'm so bad at them. And I fall for all of them. There's some okay pranks. Like for a while, there was a prank going around because we have that smoky bear cut out. Yes. And people would move that into people's offices while they were on vacation. See, so funny. the first time you walk in, it's yeah. like smoky bear right there and smacks you in the face. The that, story, those I'm okay with. Yes. The story I always heard was of Christina making Justin a coffee with mayonnaise instead of oh gosh um, creamer. Did he drink it? Yes. Sounds like something you, we will have he to might actually them. drink. It's really their story. I just yeah. remember hearing it a lot. But I don't mind those kind of pranks. Because it's like, haha, ew, that was gross. But when you make me believe something and then I look dumb, yeah, I don't really like that. Yeah, I don't like those. But have you ever played a prank on someone? What's the best prank Ooh. you've pulled? Well, I don't know. I've had lots of good ones pulled on me. Okay, what's the best one that's been pulled on you? When <laughs> we were on our honeymoon, googly eyes were added to almost everything in our house. <laughs> and a large foam cutout of Joseph from a nativity scene was put in our shower. <laughs> that reminds me of everything everywhere all at once. There's a thing in that movie where there's googly eyes on everything. Yes, and I yeah. left. Some of them were funny. Yeah. I mm-hmm. just left them. Like, our trash can looked at you every time you opened it for a very long time. That's kind of fun. It was. I like that. Uh, the best one I played was one time we had a Halloween party, and I dressed up my dress mannequin, my sewing mannequin, and put it in the shower with, like, I put one of Nick's sweatshirts and ball caps mm-hmm. on it, and then, like, cracked the shower curtain. Oh, my gosh. And just, I just waited for someone to scream, <laughs> and I did get someone really good. That's awesome. <laughs> I love it. Because uh, it freaks people out. Like, I... Yeah. Our spare room is my sewing room. When people stay mm-hmm. with us, I have to go hide it in a closet because people don't want to sleep. Yeah, if you wake up in the middle of the night and just see it in the corner yeah, or something, yeah. And I usually like use it to hold stuff, so there's like fabric thrown on top of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, when I was a kid, my little sister and I would play pranks on my parents over school breaks. Because what else were we doing? We were just at home. And my favorite one, well, I have two that live in infamy in our family. (laughs) And one was that we spent one whole day switching everything in the kitchen. Oh. Which cupboard it was in. My dad came home to make dinner and couldn't find anything. And he just said, you need to change it back. (laughs) (laughs) And we did. We knew we were going to change it back, but it was funny for a good few minutes while See, was I do that to Nick regularly but I just call it reorganizing <laughs> no we put like we put the spices furthest away from the cooking area <laughs> like, it was not good organization but it was funny and then my mom had this paraffin wax thing yeah. you know that you could dip your hands in and we randomly went around the house and would dip 
just just random things in it and i remember it must have been like fall break like around halloween because we dipped a hollow a ceramic ghost in it and pulled it out and to this day that ghost still has wax on it (laughs) i mean (laughs) many years later i don't know how you would resist that as a kid a pot of melted wax that you can dip stuff in. i mean for months i couldn't leave that alone years we my mom was finding stuff that was the best part about it is like it was just a stealth one like (laughs) because we started with some things that were easily noticeable we did one of we did a fork a spoon a knife (laughs) put them back and then we just did this random other stuff that took a while to figure it out yeah that's kind of how it was with the googly eyes like we found most of them right away and it happened because the friends who did it to us when they got married their house was filled with Shia LaBeouf (laughs) (laughs) LaBeouf. like in their picture frames and like under the lid of the butter that takes so I didn't participate in doing it yeah I just got to be their revenge yeah yeah (laughs) their revenge prank that's awesome so you might be wondering how are we going to do an April Fool's episode of this podcast (laughs) And it's important to know that we are not trying to trick you. No. We're not going to give you bad advice. That's that's just poor form. We're we're trying to educate here. We can't give bad advice and then somebody listens to the podcast and they're like, well, she said put the green side down. So I did it. (laughs) No. But we are going to talk a little bit about what we are calling unpurposeful gardening. (laughs) And these are gardens or things that we want to do that don't really make any sense, but we still want to do them because they're fun. We spend a lot of time talking about ways to make our gardens do work for us to produce food or do work for the environment to produce habitat, but we think it's really important that we remember another purpose of a garden is just to be fun and enjoyable and make you happy. Yes. <laughs> we like to be happy. Mm-hmm. That's Otherwise, why are we doing it? Yeah. And it, not everything you do has to have like 10 goals that it's meeting right Mm. sometimes it can just be fun the the perfectionists and overachievers listening are all cringing right now like yes it does it has to have 80 things it has to do 80 things it has to be forwarding the replenishment of the ecosystem and it it does still will yeah it still will they still serve some purpose but so we're going to talk a little bit about unpurposeful gardening. I love that word. Mm-hmm. Is that a real word? I don't know, but when you suggested this episode to me and you said, I want to talk about unpurposeful gardening, <laughs> I was like, I don't know what that means, but I'm I'm here. Okay. So I'll start. Okay. My unpurposeful garden that I want to put in that I haven't done yet, and this might be the year, because I was thinking the other day, because Spring Affair is coming up, and normally I'm sitting there planning like okay well I'm gonna do this garden so I need these plants I need all these things and I realized I don't have any major garden projects planned for for this year you probably filled a lot of space filled a lot of space I need to make sure that things get maintained this year because I put in three new gardens last year so I might have some filling in to do for things that didn't make it through the winter but otherwise pretty calm year (laughs) fingers crossed (laughs) april fool right right and so maybe this is the year when i put in my unpurposeful garden which is for me all the not all i won't be able to do all but plants named after royalty because i love it i am obsessed with royalty ever since i was a little kid i read all the princess diaries and i was like that's gonna be me somebody's gonna come and tell me i'm a princess because i love royalty so There are many, many plants named after royalty from all over the world, many different generations. Mm -hmm. And it will be so random because people will go, there's some shade, there's some sun, there's all different colors, there's all of these various things. And I'll just be able to say, this is my royal garden. Yeah, I like (laughs) it. I think that's fun. It's, It's fun because... It gives you a framework to select plants. Like, it's not really any different than any other garden, except instead of having the entire world of plants to choose from, you just kind of narrowed your vision 
And it can be really helpful to do that, actually. And I think it's going to take an exercise in creativity. Yeah. To to try to fit all these different types of plants in. Like some are vines, some are more bushes, some like so. And create a design that is at least fun to look at. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. And doesn't feel too random. Like you want it to be random, but not like chaos. Yeah. (laughs) So that's one that I'm excited to do. And maybe I'll buy some of our royal plants at Spring Affair this year. That'll be fun. I have no idea where I'll put it. I was gonna I was that was gonna be my next question (laughs) because you you seem to have filled many corners of your yard. Yeah. I'll find a spot. Okay. I mean, I mean, there's always more grass can be removed. Right. Or <laughs> maybe, I mean, the other question I was going to have is like, you're going to have like sun and shade uh-huh. and wet and dry in here. So uh-huh. is it going to be like all in one spot or is it going to be like a collection through your yard? I'd like to put it all in one spot. Maybe in one of those places where like the shade ends from something right. so you can have That's kind of what I was thinking. And my front yard still needs some work because of the tree being removed. So it has like, it does have some shade that goes into sun mm-hmm. and lots of space since it was pretty much all lawn underneath it. So right. that's one spot I'm thinking of. Yeah, I think that sounds but, like a lot of fun. Yeah, but we'll see. So you can, like, if you're wondering how are there royal plants? Yeah, can you tell us, like, five? Oh, my gosh. I don't know if I can tell you five. I mean, it depends on how royal you want to get. (laughs) (laughs) How you're defining royal. And which royal you want to do, if you care. Yeah. Because, obviously, one of the easier ones is going to be to go from, like, British royalty. Because those plants are more likely to grow in our region. Yeah. Because it's similar climate, Mm -hmm. even though it is still different. Um, So one thing I think would be really cool that could help with my shade is an English oak. Yeah. Because they put English oak in all of the, like, royal bouquets for weddings and funeral arrangements. I mean, it's a very regal looking tree. It's regal and it's supposed to represent the longevity and strength of Great Britain. Okay. So I think an English oak could get planted and help provide the shade. And then there's all kinds of plants like named after King Charles. Mm -hmm. Princess Diana has quite a few plants named after her. You could do a Princess Diana garden. Yes. Yeah. I think there's a Diana clematis. There's a di- there's of course a ton of roses too, mm-hmm. and I'm not a big rose person, so I might do one or two. Um, also, you don't want to put too many roses together. Yeah, it causes you get problems. Disease problems. So those are those are kind of some of the things I'm thinking of, and it'll be a it'll be a stark contrast to the rest of my garden. It will. <laughs> yeah, it'll be a switch. Yeah, but I like it. But there's some yeah, yeah. there's some good ones, and I think we're. I'm, there's, a, I'm sure, a ton of for Queen Elizabeth. I'm sure. And I bet there will be yeah. more now that she has passed. Yes. So we'll see. Yeah. We'll I see. love symbolism in plants. Mm-hmm. So I, one garden I have in mind is just like symbolic plants. Um, but that's kind of a long ways down the line. That's in a spot we have to work on. Yeah. One thing we're doing this year as a themed garden is a green and white garden. Yes, color gardens yeah. m- intrigued me. They do. And it was really interesting to shop that, like to find different habits and different shapes while it was kind of refreshing to just be like, I don't have to think about that plant. It's not white. <laughs> Are you doing like green and white flowers or like green foliage, white flowers? Green foliage, white flowers. Uh, this is what's going in this rock garden area. So, have you dug it yet? We've started raking off some rocks. Is there an update on the body? There's no situation? update on on a <laughs> body present or lack thereof. And that would make a great <laughs> April Fool's Day if we dug up something weird. And after we, the last time we talked about it, my dad did send some information on what he thinks he it did. is. He has a he has a a vote mm-hmm. that it is. Gas tank? Is that what he said? And I'd have to a go back. Fuel, and look. I think he just said fuel tank. Fuel tank, yeah. So we'll see. Yeah. Could I, be. I definitely want to borrow 
a metal detector. Yeah. Just to see before we start digging. But I did sort of keep in mind, like, we're not putting any big shrubs in there that are going to have huge deep root systems. So I think we're going to be safe planting over it. Yeah, I think so. Whatever it is. Yeah. But anyway, so it's going to be a white and green garden. Yes. And I found that super refreshing shopping wise because we want to get most of the plants at Spring Affair. So I just took the Spring Affair Excel list and sorted off everything that said it bloomed white. <laughs> you have an advantage. <laughs> I do have an advantage. I just sorted off everything that said it bloomed white and we shopped from that. And it was... Was it correct? No, I had to fix some things. Okay, good. Before we printed? <laughs> no. Oh, man. <laughs> um, Darn. But I think it was only like one or two things. Okay, good. Uh, there was a couple I caught before it printed, but yeah, it's hard because some of those things, they're listed online as blooming white, and then we just know from experience that's right. not true. And especially some of the, like, sometimes it'll say, oh, it blooms purple, and I'm like, that's, ah, that's kind of bluish, not yeah. purple. Or <laughs> you know? pink. Or pink. Yeah. 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 So yeah. And white, subjective. white and pink is kind of a line, too, sometimes. But we sorted off all that, and that's what we shopped from, and it took the spring affair list of 800 species of plants down to like a really digestible list so Mm -hmm. if you're having trouble choosing plants i recommend thinking about a theme and going from there yeah and by the way native not a theme that can narrow things down no that is a theme (laughs) that expands yeah your list not narrows it Uh that's Uh a very big list yeah perennial Mm -hmm. not a theme not a theme (laughs) nope Nope. Colors, uses. Uh huh. Heights. Heights. Um, I want to. Woody do- versus non woody. Yes. But I do try to. I'm trying to mix that in this garden. So we're doing like New Jersey tea. Yeah. I think it depends on where you are. Because we do get people who want to do like foundation plantings. Right. Like, and they want so to do that woody. Be, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Do you have any more themed gardens that you're thinking about? You know. I'm always thinking about a theme. <laughs> I'm waiting for you to do a Harry Potter garden. I would really, really like to do a Harry Potter garden. And this, I just need to do more research. So the next time I reread the books, mm-hmm. I think I'm going to write down the plants the that plants. they mention. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, we talked about, we're not going to do it this year, maybe another year, mm-hmm. doing a presentation at LeakyCon. You guys, my nerd is coming out. So I go to LeakyCon <laughs> every year. It's a Harry Potter convention. This year they announced they're going to do more fandoms, though, and I don't know how I feel about it. Ooh, no, I don't know. That's not really okay, is it? We'll see. Okay. (laughs) Okay. We'll see. Anyways, and we were going to do a Plants of Harry Potter and how to grow them. And then I said, I'm sorry, but I'm too busy. Yes, and that's, I get it. But, um... That just gives us more time to work on it, it does. because I have to. I will have to reread the books, and I was already like, "How am I going to reread all of these in that amount of time <laughs> to get you've all these time. plants now you've written got time. down?" Now you've got so time. now I have time, so I need to start my reread over, and write down all of the plants, and then research which ones I can grow, whether that be in pots or in the ground. And I would love to do a Harry Potter garden, and then I'm going to put a little Harry Potter things in the garden and i'm gonna label them fun with like the harry potter like you should build a little fairy garden of hagrid's hut yes yes Yes. i'm gonna do that i'm gonna put little um what are those things called the twig ones see guys i really gotta reread yeah um bow truckles i'm gonna put bow truckles throughout it because that's fun you're gonna have to have a whomping willow Uh Uh uh-huh uh-huh so without it getting ginormous right I don't know how you do that. Maybe I'll find a plant that looks like a whomping willow. Yeah. Desert willow. Mm. Not really. It's definitely got to have the dangly arms. It's got to have dangles. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe with some aggressive pruning. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) We'll see. I mean, you could do like a bonsai willow. Yeah. That sounds like I would kill that pretty quick. I know. I think bonsais have a lot of requirements they do i've tried to do some and i mean you all, we all know me and anything that grows in a pot is not a good combination so yeah i really want to do a hobbit garden yes i want to build a little hobbit house oh, like big enough to go in well yeah i want to live in a <laughs> hobbit house but 
<laughs> no, just like a fairy garden size oh, one, probably. Okay. Or maybe right. a playhouse. I think Nick I would be I was thinking a playhouse that. you could probably do. Yeah. Are you going to get like stuff to grow on top of it? Heck like, yeah. Either, yeah. I mean, it's got to have, it's got to be like a hill. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That, that would be, be awesome. The other themed garden we're slowly working toward, and this isn't like in one spot. It's just throughout our yard. We're collecting all the Buckley plants. Mm-hmm. So there's a um, botanist from Texas named Buckley. Mm-hmm. And so everything with Buckley eye as its species name was attributed to him or named in honor of him. Mm-hmm. So we have our Buckley oak right now, and we have our Phlox Buckley eye. And we just have been collecting as we can get a hold of them. Yeah. That's awesome. It's just fun. I think that's a good way to do it. Yeah. And this will just be like throughout the yard. There's not like the Buckley Garden. Mm -hmm. Because they're Mm -hmm. very different plants. Right. Right. Yeah. You can do it either way. I mean, I could could just do my royal plants throughout my gardens. But But I I kind of like them together. Royals like to be recognized. That's true. And so I feel like they need special recognition. They do very much. You need to be able to have a parade. Oh yes, <laughs> that sounds, that sounds awesome. Um, some gardens that I want to do that actually do serve a purpose as well, but they're fun. Is like food gardens yes. that are surrounding a specific food, like a pizza garden, yes, or a salsa garden, yeah. which, which I almost already similar. do, and they are very similar. But it's kind of fun to think about them that way, yeah, which yeah. which can be nice. But I want to do. I would need to fix my herb garden too. Yes, I need to divide very, some herbs. I think yeah. they're kind of like aging out. Which I didn't really think about them doing. Yeah. I'm helping our daycare this year put in some gardens. Ooh, fun. And one of the challenges that we've been trying to think through is food gardens of things toddlers will eat. Yeah. <laughs> so last year they had lots of fun growing tomatoes and then they all refused to eat them. So we're prob- we talked about strawberries. They don't eat tomatoes. Is that a common It's like a half thing? and half. I I think it probably depends on what they eat in their house. Yeah. Like, if it comes out of the garden, Silas will eat it. If I serve it inside on the dining room table, he doesn't like it. Mm-hmm. Why? Don't know. It's hard to get him to explain that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but... He might not know. He might not know. <laughs> yeah. So we talked about, like, strawberries and cucumbers and carrots. Mm-hmm. But, like, some of the really easy things to grow, like lettuce, you're not going to get a table full of toddlers to sit down for a salad. So I, They might do, like, I saw a Facebook post this morning of uh, preschoolers eating pea shoots. Oh, just like the little the, like, sprouts. microgreens. Cool. Yeah. They might do that. Mm-hmm. I also... It takes some... I mean, it's fast turnaround. Yeah. So... I also suggested like stevia yeah. because it just tastes like sugar. Uh-huh. And what toddler have you met who doesn't want to eat something that tastes like sugar? <laughs> <laughs> I had to convince my niece to eat. Um, uh, oh, my gosh. it's I can see it. But now it's gone out of my head when she Cotton was a toddler. Candy? Cotton candy. Yeah, yeah. 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 I had to convince her to eat that. And once she did, she loved she it. Loved it but, we had the same battle with syrup. Because yeah. it looked like sauce, and oh, he doesn't like sauce. No sauce. No sauce. <laughs> but we kind of force fed it to him, and he was yeah. like, oh, this is sugar sauce. Okay, that's a different story. It's like Buddy the Elf. <laughs> yeah. Yep, that's that's how it went. Yeah. That's funny. Um, I think another fun garden to do, because everyone is so afraid of tall plants, I want to just find the tallest plants. Bob and <laughs> Plant I them all together. have been talking about... I wanted to call it the Big and Beefy Acreage Garden. <laughs> Big and Beefy. <laughs> and do a bloom box just like option. Uh-huh. If you live on an acreage. Triple B. <laughs> quadruple B. <laughs> Big Beefy Bloom Box. <laughs> yeah, why not? Because people will tell us that they are like filling their acreage with bloom boxes and we're like, well, if you want to do that, we've got some plants that'll fill space. Yeah, you need bigger yeah, plants. like Joe Pye and some of the goldenrods and some hyssa. Rudbeckia. Rudbeckia. I mean, there's some plants that'll fill some space. And some people, mm-hmm. like, really, they need that. They want to fill mm-hmm. some space. Big or blue like, stem. 
big blue stem indian grass yeah. i would not put that in an in-town garden Ooh, i planted some indian grass i'm excited <laughs> for it if you can keep it i'm using it as a screen yeah it might that's what i was thinking if you mm-hmm. need to screen something and you're i mean if you're on an if you have a new windbreak mm-hmm. and you want some screen from the highway or something you perennials will fill that time gap mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. there's some really cool big plants that mm-hmm. sometimes we just can't grow as easily in Ooh, town. Baptisia alba. Yeah. That thing's huge. That thing's huge and gangly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sticks right up. Um, oh, some of the liatrices are like mm-hmm. six feet tall. Mm-hmm. And how cool would that be to be like grass is grass and then just pff, this spiky. Giant liatris. <laughs> liatris. Probably yeah. purple, right? Yeah. That would be cool. And then um, pitcher sage. Mm-hmm. That I can keep in town. If you I do have the, it in a few places, yeah. but it, I am so excited because one of the gardens that I'm watching this year that I planted last year, and I'm hoping it grows up, has my Indian grass. It has some other grasses, and then I planted in the middle of it pitcher sage Ugh. and baptisia alba, and I'm waiting for that grass to grow up and, and then just hold these, them up, hold them up, yes. and these just like spill out of these grasses. Yes. Oh, I hope it goes well, it and it's a so screen pretty. for my. Um, air conditioning unit yes that the neighbor's front door looks at uh, so i want it to be nice pretty you to, for them yeah that's very nice and we, all of those we finally things. have new neighbors oh yeah and they're cleaning up the house well that's good we were very nervous it was gonna be like somebody who just wanted to rent it out and mm-hmm. like you know slapped some paint on it mm-hmm. or like a flipper who like spent two years tearing the whole thing apart but right. it appears and then you have to construction be construction next to you the whole time yeah Ooh. it appears to be like someone maybe my parents age and maybe a single lady maybe her husband yeah i'm not sure yet but there's a wreath hanging on the door and that's a good sign <laughs> to me if you bother to hang a wreath on your door you're probably gonna take care of your house i would agree yeah yeah. Mm-hmm. Hopefully it doesn't stop at the wreath. <laughs> uh, yes. We're we're we haven't met them yet, but we're hoping to be like, hey, you know, we like to prune trees. <laughs> we'll prune that tree that's hanging in our driveway for oh, you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Just offer a little neighborly yeah. help. Yeah. And you're a good baker. You take over some, so some bread. bread. Yeah. Hi. Can we chop down your tree? <laughs> <laughs> my neighbor brought over bread to say thank you for shoveling their walk oh then alistair ate the whole loaf when we turned our back that seems typical it was still warm i know oh. i was so sad oh that's so <laughs> terrible and then he was oh. sick <laughs> so, oh yeah i anyways. made cheddar chive biscuits this weekend oh and then when i came back in the kitchen silas and nick had eaten like three a piece and i <laughs> Slow down. <laughs> I only made a dozen. Right? Oh my gosh. They were really good. I think I'm going to make hot cross buns for Easter this Ooh, year. I've be. never made them. I haven't either. I've, I'm going to give it a go. I will be very interested to hear how that turns out. Okay. Have you ever made the empty biscuits? I have not. I mm-hmm. tried that one time and they, mine were not empty. They did mm-hmm. not get proper air bubbles in them. Yeah. I've seen people do it by putting marshmallows in the middle. Oh yeah. That might help. Mm-hmm. Anyway, sorry. Off of got, ba- this is not a baking podcast. This is not. A, we could have a baking podcast. <laughs> you could. Work would not pay for that. <laughs> no. <laughs> it doesn't really align with our mission. It does not. Unless we're putting herbs in it, which you do sometimes. I, do. I love the <laughs> herbs in my baking. Mm-hmm. There we go. Anyways, more unpurposeful gardens? Uh, my blueberry bush, which not only yeah. is going to be a stretch because it needs serious soil amendment, but I put it in a pot. <laughs> I'm going to need some accountability to water it. Yeah. And where did you guys land on your currants? They're going. <laughs> we agreed on the currants. Oh, you agreed. After I showed him where I wanted them, we okay. have agreed. He, I mean, Nick really likes currants. There's a mm-hmm. currant bush at his grandparents' house. Oh, okay. Um, that no one has really taken care of for a long time. And I think the deer mostly benefit from the currants now. Sure. But uh, he remembers eating them. Mm-hmm. And so he, we were both on board with currants we just were trying to agree on the location perfect and it has been agreed now i have to find i really want a clove currant which is starting to get really picky of me like they're all good yeah i didn't even what's the difference their flowers smell spicy Ooh, yeah that's they're really hard to get where are they from i have no idea i think it's just 
We'll have to look it up. Yeah. Yeah. Bob we'll has had them off and on. Oh, okay. As we can get them. Yeah. And I know other nurseries have them off and on as they can get them. Uh-huh. But they're Cause it's like popular. A, is a bush? Mm-hmm. Right? Yep. It's like a five foot bush. Okay. But I feel like we could prune it a little bit. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's, yeah. So that's going to be good. That's fine. So My, you got some fruit yeah. about... It's maybe not the most purposeful. Right. <laughs> about, about. But you'll use them. Oh, yeah, we will. Yes. I'm more worried about this blueberry situation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that I don't do well with things in pots because they make me cranky when all my plants in the ground are just thriving without me. Yeah. And then all these plants in their pots, they want me to water them every oh day. Oh, my gosh. Right? Like, uh, I can't, can't handle you take it. take care of yourself a little more? This morning I was eating breakfast and I was like, I have to water my plants yes. today. Yes. In fact, <laughs> I can't Toby wait. stopped in my office last week and was like, you know, have you, have you thought about watering your plants? <laughs> <laughs> I love that he so kindly reminds yeah. us about yeah, our office like, plants because uh, he does that to me too and he's so nice about it he's very nice about it and i'm like oh nope nope i really i had not thought about that but i will now Mm-mm. still haven't done it the problem is i wait for them to tell me they need watered and that's not okay no it doesn't and go well part of my problem is i try to put too many plants in this office so they're like way up on top of my shelves yeah and i have to stand up on my desk to water them and that's just like one step too much. That one's looking rough. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you might want to focus on that one. Might to start need to with. focus on that one a bit. Yeah, it's getting warmer though to where you can move them to the window. Yes. So the reason they're up on top of the shelf is because our windows get really cold. How do your windows open? I just realized you have opening windows. I do have opening windows. This whole side of the building has, well, they open like three inches. I need to switch offices. (laughs) (laughs) No, I'm just kidding. I mean, they don't really open enough to benefit from. Like, I can hear that the outdoors is there. Could you smell the rain? Not really. I mostly just can hear the residence hall air conditioner running. Oh, I don't need that. So... It's not it's not as cool as it looks. Mm-hmm. Okay, so here's another unpurposeful garden that Toby would tell you is very purposeful, <laughs> I think, because he has what I have heard. I have not seen, I'm planning to see it this summer. I'm going to just show up at his house. A prolific garden of succulents that he pots and moves in and out. Yeah. And like sets up, he said, like next to his house. And knowing Toby, it is very aesthetically pleasing. I'm sure it's aesthetically (laughs) pleasing and I'm sure they get excellent care. Yeah. Yeah. And so to me, I'm just like, I, there, I know people who have plants that they move in and outside every season. That would never happen. I I can't, I can't do that. I did it with two, three plants this year and, Whew, it's been a long winter of keeping them alive. <laughs> I do much better once they're outside because I can just splash them with the hose. Or like now, one last at the end of last summer when Silas like started to understand things a little yeah. bit more, I would just fill a five gallon bucket and give him his little watering can and sit in my lawn chair and be like, "That one needs some water. That one needs some water." <laughs> and he would just ran back and forth. It was great. That's fun. He never has had little such, chores. He does. Mm-hmm. I've never had such healthy potted plants. There you go. Um, sometimes the water mist, but like, I I can just splash him with the hose. If yeah, I have to yeah, walk yeah. around my house with a watering can. Because then you also have to be careful. Yes. I'm not careful. <laughs> I'm not careful either. And I have wood floors. Uh-huh. Ugh. So I have like towels and trays uh-huh. under all my plants. Uh-huh. Uh, I do much better once they get outside. Yeah. Same. It's the keeping them alive over the winter. Right. That's the hard tough. part. And I thought when we bought our house, like our what was our front porch was framed in and has a window. It's our dining room. And it faces south. And I was like, oh, it's a greenhouse room. Well, no, it's a roasting oven. Oh, because the south sun comes in in the winter and just bakes it. Mm-hmm. And then it's kind of poorly insulated. So the sun goes down and then it like freezes. It's really cold. So yeah. it's not a very good growing room. Yeah. Oh, darn. But that's okay. 
All right. Any more purposeful gardens for it? Unpurposeful gardens? For I am ordering another tea bush. <laughs> <laughs> oh, t- glutton for punishment. <laughs> I am, but I'm taking a different approach this year. Okay. So, when, what did I have that one? I bought it during COVID and then I moved it to the office mm-hmm. to try to resurrect it and it didn't work. It got some kind of mold, leaf mold. Uh huh. And. So I'm taking a different I think direction. It's funny that you thought you'd pay closer attention in the office. Yeah, yeah, I don't know why I thought that. Um, well, I have some fungicide here, and oh, I didn't want to use fungicide at home with yeah, Silas, yeah. so I brought it here to use in my office. Mm-hmm. Um, there, the last time I ordered the most cold hardy variety of tea, uh huh, thinking it would do better in Nebraska, yeah, but it still pretty much had to be a house plant. Yes, so I think it got too warm. Mm-hmm. So this time I bought the most tropical variety of tea. And you're just going to keep it warm. And I'm just going to and... like not plant like because I thought it can come inside for the winter, but it can mostly live outside. Yeah. And this time I was scrapping that plant. I just bought the most tropical kind and it's going to just be a house plant. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We'll see. <laughs> How, How are you going to keep it humid enough? Um, I In the think winter. it will have to live near Fred, our humidifier. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, because that is like another drawback of an old house is the giant air ducts that Mm -hmm. blow out huge amounts of very dry air. Super dry. Yeah. But I run humidifiers a lot Mm -hmm. during the winter. Mm -hmm. And so I think it will just have to, we did that. We do that with our Christmas tree. We put a humidifier by it. You could put it in the greenhouse. That is also a thought that hadn't crossed my mind. Oh, it didn't cross my mind because the year I bought it was COVID and I wasn't allowed to come in the greenhouse. Yeah. But, but now I Moving could. forward, you could put it in the greenhouse and the, the production greenhouse would be perfect. Oh, well, yes. I write, I need to go check on... I've got Bay and Jasmine yeah. down in the greenhouse. I'm going to grow Bay this year. I haven't before. I love my Bay tree. That is another royal plant. It is. Bay laurel. They use a lot. To, I can't remember what the symbolism is. Well, but I know, like, the things. cottage people would, like, use it in May Day mm-hmm. or something like that. Mm-hmm. That was a really vague reference, but I can, like, picture <laughs> crowns of it. Yeah, crowns of yeah. bay laurel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it, I, I'll look it up, but. Yeah. I love my bay tree. I forget a lot because it has to go to the greenhouse for the winter. Right. And I don't buy bay leaves in the store because I have a bay tree. And so then all winter when I want to make soup and I forget that I have no bay around. So I just go and cut a branch and keep it in a glass of water until I run out. That works. I'm looking it up. Oh, it's a symbol of wisdom. Oh, that makes sense. I Mm -hmm. think it's like also um, like a fairy tale thing. Well, yes. So bay laurel was a symbol of wisdom, both acquired and intuitive. And it's Celtic originally. Okay. Anything else you're trying to grow that might take more care than we usually want our plants to need? I mean, there's things that I'm growing that shouldn't take as much care as they are taking. (laughs) (laughs) Why is that? Like, um, my service berry. Oh, yes. You know, that thing has just been through the ringer. It's been taking a beating. And every year, I think, this might be the year it doesn't come back. And then it does. And then it does, but it, like, hasn't grown at all. So we'll see. But, no, I think those are my unpurposeful gardens. I think we, like, we have, like, a carport off our garage Mm -hmm. that we don't park in. We use as our patio. And it can get kind of warm because it's concrete. And we do have, like, sunshades to pull down. But... One way we try to keep it cool is by filling it with potted plants. Mm-hmm. So, like, we'll go yeah. get a palm tree, like this one that's decaying in the corner <laughs> of my office. I brought my palm tree in because I thought I could keep it through the winter. And it turns out it was just way too dry in our offices. Yeah. It was just, there was no way. I even tried spritzing it with water. Mm-hmm. But it was $20 from the hardware store, so I'm just going to get another one. Sure. But it really helped keep keep it cooler being around those plants. And... We hang hanging pots off the pillars of Ooh, the, fun. yes, fun, except they only technically get part sun, but mm. the sun they get is very, very, very hot. And yeah. so I've really been struggling with them. Like what can handle not having eight hours of sun, 
but can handle being scorched. Same. I have this same problem on my porch. And for a while, since I had that huge tree, they got zero sun. Right. So I was always like, what is something that's flowery and pretty and that grows quick, but doesn't need any sun? And that's really almost impossible. Yeah. Ferns, but they don't flower. Right. And now I have this where it's like one side gets just intense sun for a good part of the day and they dry out. I have to water it every day. Every day. So then I've been switching them back and forth. Mm-hmm. Like, We've done that. We've rotated Ugh. them. Mm-hmm. But it's always very, and they're always in the most inconvenient place to water. Yep. Like right right out of the hose's reach mm-hmm. or something. And they're above your head uh, so then the water drips down your hands. Yes. Ugh. So, I hate that feeling. well, you were talking, uh, Toby stopped in to say one of our new spring affair vendors this year is someone who sells wool pellets. Yes. That are I supposed to like hold moisture and break down mm-hmm. into like carbon and nitrogen. Mm-hmm. And I think I might try some of those because if they could hold some water in, because we have the pretty core lined pots. Yes. Which just don't hold a lot of water. That's true. It's not yeah. a lot of soil in it's general. It's not a lot of soil. Yeah. So I think the soil needs to be really good at water holding. Uh-huh. And you also have to fight that if you go buy a full hanging basket from the store, they have put so many plants in there so that it looks full and bountiful by Mother's Day. Yep. But by June, there is no more soil space. The roots have filled that whole pot. Yep. So I definitely always plant my own and I start a little skimpy. Sometimes I... Buy those and break them up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because then you get a nice variety of things. Sometimes they're less expensive that way. Yeah. Which is kind of odd. It's weird. I don't get it. I don't understand either. Mm -hmm. But I think it's because they cram all those plants in there when they're actually pretty tiny and they didn't cost them a lot. Yeah. But yeah. Hanging pots. I would be very interested if any of our listeners have hanging pot tips. Please share because we love those hanging pots. They make our patio just like so pretty, but they are hard Mm -hmm. to keep alive. Mm -hmm. They really are. Mm -hmm. Partly because, as you've probably gathered, Sarah and I, not great at watering. No, no. We, (laughs) I mean, we, it's funny, but like our whole job revolves around helping you guys plant gardens that need less water. (laughs) And so when we do our unpurposeful gardening, Then we're like, I can get kind of resentful of the things that do need water. And then Bob goes, hey, I'm going out of town. Can one of you water the greenhouse this weekend? And I go, oh, yes. Now that I'm very good at. (laughs) I'm good at it, but it's terrible. I hate (laughs) it. And it always takes longer than I think. It always takes longer than you think. I... That is different to me. Now we're adding another greenhouse. It's going to double the time. It, it has automatic irrigation in it. Oh, yeah. That's why we so added expensive. that. <laughs> That's right. It's part of why it, it costs so much. Uh, but it's worth it. It's really important. Um, yeah, I don't mind watering in the greenhouse. That's kind of different to me. Yeah. But I don't know. All right. Should we talk about our plant of the week? No. <laughs> I don't. Have- <laughs> do you have an unpurposeful plant to talk about? Oh, I'm sure I do. Um, we should, yeah, let's pick an unpurposeful plant. Here, we can use. This. Oh, wait, I, I've got my unpurposeful. Well, yeah, I've got mine. Okay. My unpurposeful plant of the week is a combination <laughs> of zinnias, which aren't really unpurposeful. That, they're great yeah, for they're pollinators. Great. And ruby crystals, or ruby pink ribbons grass, it's ruby crystals grass. It is yeah. ruby crystals grass. Oh, you have that this year? Uh, that grass is gorgeous. It is not in Spring Affair, but I'm ordering a flat. Yay. And I'm happy to split it with you. Thank you. Um, we bought it last... We had it in the greenhouse last year, and it just yeah. never sold. Yeah. Which is how I ended up with it. Because we need... We need a picture yeah. of it. Well, and I have pictures now. The yeah. problem is that it's an annual. Yes. And people shopping at our greenhouse aren't here for annuals. Mm-hmm. Um. And it really serves little to no habitat purpose. Yeah. So it kind of doesn't fit our customers. But it's gorgeous. so pretty. And combined with zinnias, it mm-hmm. just, mm-hmm. we planted them around the base of our desert willow. And then it had these bright pink flowers and the ruby crystals grass. It's like dark green all summer, like blue green. 
And then when the seed heads come out, they turn pink, like bright pink. So it went really well with our desert willow plant. So my unpurposeful plant is bleeding hearts. I love bleeding hearts. I love the way they look. I think they're gorgeous. Some people are out there yelling, they have a purpose. They do for me in that they grow in the shade. Yes. And I have a lot of shady spots in my backyard. And they're one of the few things that are growing well under my black walnut. And blooming in the shade. And blooming. Yeah. Well, so that would be mine. Yeah. So Sarah's going to look up if anything depends on them for any type of service. I don't know how they would because... You've seen bleeding hearts. I mean, maybe some beetles or something. Or maybe... I wouldn't even think like a hummingbird would be able to get in there. Nope. That's what does. Yeah. A hummingbird is what can get in there. And you've got to see this picture. It's like coming up from underneath. Oh, well, that's an inconvenient way to eat. It looks very inconvenient <laughs> and extremely uncomfortable to me. This picture also shows a bumblebee. It, like, opened the flower up. Like, yeah. it, it, the white part, it, like, opened it up. Yeah. That I seems questionable. Think, <laughs> I think that these are probably not anybody's first choice for food, if you've got other... Yeah. Food in your garden. I think the hummingbird seems the most likely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe, but my yard doesn't attract a lot of hummingbirds anyways. I don't have hummingbird feeders. I think it's too hard. I want hummingbirds. (laughs) My mom always gets a lot of hummingbirds because they're in Iowa. Mm -hmm. And I guess the migration's just a little heavier, a little further east. And she puts petunias out in her hanging pots and they just... I think I've seen hummingbirds in Lincoln like twice. Some people I know get them all Karma the time. Karma gets a lot of them. And she only lives like four blocks from you. You must have to work for it. I, I don't know. Do. I think I, she does. I think she, she puts feeders and stuff yeah, out. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm just not going to work that hard. Come or don't. <laughs> That's my theory. Either way. Here's what I'm making for dinner. If you like it, come. If you don't, stay away. <laughs> That's what I say. Either way, bleeding hearts are beautiful. They are beautiful. Whether they attract anything Mm -hmm. or not. Yes, I enjoy them. People got very excited about the yellow one at Spring Affair last year. Okay, well, I don't like yellow flowers. I don't know how I feel about... (laughs) I love bleeding hearts for their pink and red and white. Yes, I I, like all those colors of them. But I had a project request cut leaf bleeding heart this year, which I'm going to have to tell them I have no idea where to supply that from. Yeah. But it is neat looking. It looks more even more ferny okay um but i have no idea where you acquire that plant nope couldn't tell you so all right well this is wonderful don't forget to send in your questions since we're gonna do that mid-may question and answer episode we're also gonna be taking questions at spring affair Mm -hmm. we're gonna walk around we're gonna record you if you have a question so find us and we will record it and then answer it we will answer you on the spot we will do that as we will just also answer it Mm -hmm. in may for everyone else that's right so send us your questions and please don't forget to review us by this time our rate and review competition is over so you can't make hannah pay anymore but you can still help the podcast but you can still help bye giving us a rating, giving us a review, all on Apple Podcasts. That's the most useful. All right. Thank you for listening. Bloombox and Bloombox Growing Deeper are both programs of the Nebraska Statewide Arboretum. <music>